What's happening everybody? The Poets here, hope you're doing well and staying safe. In this video, it's gonna be part of a three video series because we have kind of a lot to cover right here. This is the i9-13900KS processor by Intel. This thing runs at six gigahertz out the box. It's basically a binned CPU, meaning it's the best of the best. And because it's at six gigahertz and because it has 32 threads, this thing does uh, run kind of hot. So you have to somewhat think outside of the box in order to allow it to really stay cool and flex its muscles. Moving on. So thank you to Intel for sending out the 13900KS processor and thank you to my partner EKWB for sending this out. And I've been waiting to use this technology. This is a thermal electric cooler, the EK Quantum Delta Squared Tech thermal electric cooler. So this is their second generation of this actually. So uh, tech has been around for a while, but it's always been really extreme overclocking or just extreme cooling scenarios because you get a lot of condensation. There's a lot of drawbacks. You typically wouldn't always run a tech cooler on a CPU because of that condensation. Basically it's sub ambient cooling. Let's go with science. Uh, greetings everyone, Bill and I here. So when you have uh, a cooler that is cooling something that's below the ambient room temperature, condensation happens. So EK has actually refined that. We're gonna go through some of this right here. So in this video, it's more of an unboxing and what this is all about. Second video, we're going to put this in a PC and get going. Third video is gonna be more of a thorough review, how to really use it, my thoughts, how is it performing gaming and all that stuff. So please subscribe, hit the like button because uh, yeah, we're gonna be here for a little while. So basically with this being their second generation, the first generation used um, aluminum oxide actually, and it performed pretty well, but they refined it and moved to aluminum nitride with this generation and actually has four ceramic tech plates uh, to allow it to be more efficient than the previous or the first generation. So let's go ahead and open this up, do an unboxing. And EK did send me a number of things. So they did send some fittings. They sent some of their, uh, my, some of my favorite tubing. It's the zero maintenance tubings in a ZMT, uh, basically black soft tubing. And it's great for test builds, great for workstations as well. And this, stay, is gonna be really exciting. So as you can tell, I haven't, opened it yet so we're going to all experience this together and let's move the product placement around so it's an interesting way of putting a cable okay i've never seen it done that way before kind of cool all right we know we're going to use this so we'll set that aside gently and this right here okay so I actually attended an Intel event recently and uh, they did have this up and running and a very interesting PC. And uh, maybe I'll show some clips of that event, but this is the controller. So this is what is actually sensing, hey, how much uh, humidity is underneath the block right here. Um, and basically controlling everything it needs for the tech cooler. And this is actually quite stylish. I I'm liking this. It does come with a bracket uh, so that you can mount this on a 120 millimeter fan mount somewhere in the case, but I don't think you're going to get too much space in terms of where you can um, like extend it. I think it has to be fairly close. So then we have uh, some, uh, just some power cables. All right, cool. Um, we'll set those aside as well. And we're just going to lift this up because, ooh, that's a heavy boy this is the star of the hour so this is the your kind of a traditional water block with a lot of extras going on here so you can see the cables are very different from your traditional water block cables uh, so we have some power right here i believe uh, some data cables as well so that's going to plug into the controller right here then of course we have some RGB, you know, it's that how else are you gonna stay cool if it doesn't have RGB? And then on the back here, this is really where all the, uh, the tech really shines <laughs> uh, because you'll notice that this is actually 
uh, rubber. It's like it's basically a sealant. So when you're putting this on the 13900KS processor or any Intel 12th and 13th gen processors, uh, so like 12, uh, 600K up to the 13900KS processor, uh, this, is, this is what that's compatible with. Um, this is gonna seal quite nicely. So it's LGA 1700 for those that need the actual number. And so the sensors are gonna say, hey, this is getting uh, a little humid in here. You know, we need, to, or, you know, condensation may start happening. So it's gonna adjust everything on the fly to make sure that there's no condensation whatsoever. So this is beefy. Now, because the, uh, you have a lot of wattage basically going into this, the tech cooler will hit like 210 watts in order to, you know, basically rip the heat away from the 13900KS processor. That's a lot more wattage that also needs to dissipate heat. So you have the wattage for the CPU, 13900KS processor, six gigahertz. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's added heat. Then you have the heat from the tech cooler that's actually pulling the heat away, you know, from the 13900KS processor. So you have to have a robust water cooling loop to handle the heat from both devices. So say 210 watts from here, however many watts you have pumping through here, if you're an overclock or all that stuff, or, you know, just gaming, whatever you're going to do, you have to add all that up and make sure you have the adequate size power supply unit as well. That's very, very important. Um, but of course, even more important is having the right amount of surface area for your radiators. So let's go ahead and set this aside for now. See what else is in here. And aha. so we do have the tools needed in order to uh, properly apply this to the motherboard and processor. And then we have, uh, there we go, the plate as well, back plate. Very cool. And then they do also include uh, some thermal paste. So EK, I'm gonna, I'm not even gonna guess what brand it is. It is like EK labeled, but EK doesn't make their own thermal paste. And uh, of course, all the fittings and everything that you'll need for that. Anything else in here? Yep, we have the 120 millimeter bracket as well. So you can basically mount this where you need to. Uh, for many PCs, it's the rear fan will have 120 millimeter size, uh, but check with your PC because like one PC behind me, that's actually 140 millimeter. Don't call me Linus, uh, 140 millimeter. So this actually wouldn't, you know, fit as easily, but if you're a modder, you can do whatever you want to do, obviously. So that's it in this box right here. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be a very interesting project. So this controller looks great. The first gen, <laughs> basically what they did was they had this uh, kind of awkward looking black box, which was the controller, and they just stuck it right on top of the CPU water block. And it wasn't the best of looking cooling solutions, but it, it did the trick. Uh, but I'm glad that they went more for one, improved technology this round with the aluminum nitride. Yeah, I mean, having those four ceramic tech plates, that's going to be awesome. And uh, obviously this chrome look or nickel plated look is amazing. So that's uh, almost it from this video. Uh, basically, these are the fittings we're going to be using. So these are the EK Quantum Torque. It's a six pack, um, so soft tubing. I like, um, well, for tubing, you have inner and outer diameter. Okay, so this is 16 millimeters outer diameter. 10 millimeters inner diameter, you subtract the difference and that's how thick the tubing actually is. So it's, it's nice and thick tubing. And if we can open this up, let's see, I might have, yep. All right. I have a cutting utensil. Hopefully I did it first try. I did. Hey, so they sent a whole bunch of black fittings, which was really nice because the tubing is going to be black as well. And you're just going to open these up just like that. Shove the tubing right on there. Insert this through the tubing and then you're just going to screw it down and that's it. Soft tubing is so nice and easy to use, especially for workstations where you want the least amount of downtime possible. Um, and then of course for test beds, 
Uh, so I have a couple of test beds. Soft tubing is definitely the way to go, especially for new technology like this, where we just want to make sure that we have everything correct. And I don't want to be uh, bending tubes and then have to rebend tubes and recut tubes and all that stuff. So uh, maybe once I know that all this is working perfectly, and if you guys say in the comment section, you want to see an actual finished showcased hardline tubing build, I'll be happy to do that. All right. So that's about it. I made a mess, but uh, yeah, thank you to Intel for sending over the 13900KS processor. That's actually, actually, they sent it in this. This was the 13900K processor. So they sent two processors. <laughs> thank you, Intel, so much. Um, specifically, Intel Gaming. And then uh, EK, thank you again as well. Always been a big uh, supporter and one of the original supporters of my channel. So thank you again. So stay tuned for part two. Let me know in the comment section what questions you may have. Uh, obviously, I'll try to address all of those in my part two video. And it's going to be a lot like kind of a lengthy how to video and how to put all this together, its performance and all that stuff. And we'll wrap it all up in part three. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe if you like all this stuff and definitely more to come. Thank you very much. Peace.